Hey guys, so trap tricks have been in the game for the longest time, but did you ever think they'd get a structure deck? I sure didn't. In this video, we will explore my deck profile post Forest of the Trap Tricks. This is the best build after months of playtesting and competition in actual tournaments. Without further ado, let's begin. Starting out, we have three copies of Trap Tricks Mantis. This searches all of your Trap Tricks monsters, including Kino, one of the new monsters that can special summon itself. Must play for three of. Next, we have three copies of Trap Tricks Mermilio. This searches out all of your Trap Hole cards, including the new Holteria. Also, it's not a once per turn to pack, pop back row when it is special summoned. These two are a must play at three. Next, we have two copies of Trap Tricks Pudica. This is going to be one of our new monsters. So when it's normal summoned, it searches for the field spell, which allows for an additional normal summon. And special summon effect is when special summon, you can target an opponent's special summon monster, banish it. And then during the next ban by phase, they can special summon one of their banished monsters. Really good for interruption. And when the opponent's monster special summon itself, you can activate your trap hole card to get rid of it. Next, we have a card I'm not going to try to pronounce, but its Japanese name is Kino. During the main phase, if you control a Trap Tricks monster, you can special summon it. And while it's on the field, it protects all of your set back row once each from destruction. This allows for extension, and it also protects your back row, which is a great addition to the deck. We play one copy of Trap Tricks Dania, which special summons a Trap Tricks monster from the graveyard when it's normal summoned and it resets one of your trap holes from the graveyard when special summoned. For our non-trap tricks monsters, we play two maxi. If this card resolves, it helps us gain control of the game, whether we draw a bunch of cards or they end their turn preemptively. Next, we play two copies of Lady Labyrinth. Powerhouse of the deck. It gives you access to all of your normal trap cards in the deck and has 3000 attack. And for the last card, we played two Wanapi. This is a new addition. This card just came out in the OCG. It has an interesting effect where during either player's end phase, you can discard it or send it from field to graveyard. Reveal the top cards of your deck equal to the number of unused spell and trap card zones in your opponent's side of the field. And you can set a normal trap card in those. So a lot of times you can probably go through three or four cards. And this deck is running 16 or 15 trap cards which means that you probably have a good chance of hitting one of those cards. Now for the spell cards, we play three copies of the new Trap Tricks Orchard. The brand new field spell, which gives you an additional normal summon, protects against battle once, and special summons a Trap Tricks from hand or grave. What more could you ask for in a Trap Tricks field spell? Next, we play two copies of Triple Talic Talents. This card is just a great card, especially going second. I played it actually yesterday and stole a maxi from my opponent's hand. Really great way to interact with your opponent when they got an established board. And for the last spell, we play one Harpy's Feather Duster. Almost every time I draw it, I use it. Now for the trap cards. So we have our new trap hole right here. Amazing addition to the deck. You can uh, special summon it as a token, which activates your Sarah effect, and it gives you an additional level four body. But what's even better is if you discard a trap card from your hand, you can activate the turn it's set. And when it's in the graveyard, you can banish it to revive one of your trap tricks monsters. It's a really great way to interact on your opponent's turn, banish to special summon from your graveyard, whether it's an offensive play or defensive play. For other trap holes, we play one grave diggers trap hole, one chain hole, one time space hole, and one floodgate trap hole. So what's really amazing about these cards is that they all have their uses, they're searchable, and they can be activated from the deck. This one negates anything that doesn't activate on the field and burns them for 2,000, which is very important. If your opponent chains anything to your cards, you can negate it and make them banish the same card from their deck or card from their hand. Bounces, a card that special summon from the hand or extra deck, and flips a monster face down permanently. And they can all be retrieved back from the graveyard. For our generic power trap cards, we're gonna play three dimensional barrier. No explanation needed, but there's a lot of extra deck decks running around. And even if your opponent doesn't play an extra deck deck, you can activate it, call anything and act and go off from there because a lot of your trap 
because a lot of your trap tricks monsters gain effects when you activate a normal trap card. Next we play two infinite permanents. This is our last hand trap. Really great to negating stuff and also triggers your cards as well. Next we play Welcome. Big Welcome Labyrinth. New addition to the deck. There's a lot of times where you just draw no trap tricks monsters and have to set back five back row. With this, you can at least interact with your opponent's turn and get a big monster. And for our final powerhouse trap cards, we play one Terror with Overroot and one Weight Measuring. This is a given. This one, if you guys don't know, it punishes your opponent for having too many monsters in the field. If they control two or more monsters than you do, they have to make it so that they only control one monster. A lot of times you can control your board where you don't have that many monsters, especially with a big welcome labyrinth. You can bounce one of your monsters back to your hand, activate this, and then punish them for it. It's kind of like a evenly match, but you can activate at any point. And for our counter trap cards, we play two warning and one judgment. Warning paying 2,000 life to stop a summon is pretty good, especially because they can't activate anything in response. And Solemn Judgment, paying half your life is kind of harsh, but it can stop anything, and I'm really happy to have it in the deck. Extra deck. So we play two copies of Sarah. This is the bread and butter of the deck. You go into this every time, and it gives you so much advantage. Like NVT said on his latest YouTube video, it's the most broken card in the game that isn't part of a meta deck. And what's even better is the field spell now protects it from battle. A lot of times you'd be sitting on this 800 attack monster, they'd run it over, and then you have to start all over again. But at least with the field spell, you can protect it. And most times people forget that it can't be destroyed by battle once with the field spell live. Next, we play one copy of Trap Tricks Claria. It's honestly the weakest Trap Tricks monster in the extra deck. It allows you to reset a trap hole instead of sending it to the graveyard. But 9 times out of 10, I'd rather special summon a Trap Tricks monster from my deck to interact on my opponent's turn. New boss monster, Trap Tricks Atyphus. This card is so godly. So first, summoning condition is easy. You just have to use 3 materials and one of them has to be a plant or an insect. So a lot of times I will go into a generic Link 2 and a Sarah. Go right into this. All your Trap Tricks gains 1000 attack while it's on the field which allows you to kill your opponent in one turn relatively easily. And it has a kind of like blank Dark Ruler effect where you can negate your opponent's monsters on their field. And for our generic links, we have Cerberus and Phoenix. You know, just self-explanatory, popping a back row and popping a main monster at Special Summon is pretty good. And for our last link, we play one Borosaur Dragon. It could be Access Code Talker, but I don't really go into the Link Force that often, so... Now for our Xyz monsters, Trap Tricks with Flegia. It protects your Trap Tricks monsters and allows you to use trap holes from your deck. Our new Xyz monster, Trap Tricks with Marius. Uh, that's not the right one. Trap Tricks with Lyramis. This allows you to OTK by special summoning your Trap Tricks from Grave. We can talk about that later. And for our new monster, Trap Tricks, I don't even want to try to pronounce it. This card allows you to search for any Trap Tricks monster from your deck. And second effect is that if your opponent's monster is sent to the grave or banished by a card effect, you can attach one of them to this material. And the funny thing is it can even be done if your opponent does it, so it's really good against decks that interact with their own monsters a lot, such as uh, Tier Limits. And for our generic Xyz monsters, we have Baguska, lets you stall for an extra turn or two. Abyss Dwell, a really great game two or three when you know you're going against a deck that interacts with its own graveyard a lot. One copy of Sacred <laughs> Tree. This is one of the new cards. It's a Shonen Jump promo. It allows you to return a normal trap card from your graveyard to your deck to draw a card, which is uh, pretty good, especially in a simplified game state. One copy of Tornado Dragon. You know, it's really good against decks like Runic. You gotta keep trying to pop their field spell over and over again until they can't play. And one copy of Time Thief Redoer. If you don't know what you're playing against, Redoer gives you information against the deck you're playing and allows you to interact even on your opponent's turn. So what makes this deck so special is all of the extra deck monsters have a clause that they are unaffected by trap effects. The Xyz monsters require material and the Link monsters have to be Link summoned. So 
So what's really great about this is, for example, you can normal summon Sarah, Phoenix, Effect, hopefully pop one, go off into Link 3. Please use my list as a guide for when it comes out in the TCG. This deck can finally compete with the meta and I'm super excited to win with it. Since it isn't the best deck, you have to master your plays and outplay your opponent to win the hard matchups. I will be posting more Trap Tricks content in the future, so please consider subscribing for more. Take care, guys.